yes we will move on to our next experiment third experiment colpits and crystal oscillator so first we will go through the colpits oscillator here so what is our aim design and set up the following tuned oscillator circuits using bjt and determine the frequency of oscillation so in colpits oscillator and crystal oscillator these are your high frequency oscillators these are my high frequency oscillators so oscillator means what which is a frequency generator so which gives a frequency output without supplying any input voltage so for frequency generation means for oscillation it works on barkhausen criteria as you know the barkhausen criteria states that barkhausen criteria as per barkhausen criteria it states that the phase shift along the loop the phase shift along the loop should be 360 degree or 0 degree and another statement of barkhausen criteria is that the loop gain a beta should be greater than or equals to 1 so as per barkhausen criteria this is my amplifier so in this amplifier output of this amplifier is connected back to the feedback network so i'll take a feedback network here beta beta stands for feedback network and output of this feedback network is given as input to amplifier so here the amplifier i'm using ce amplifier using bjt ce amplifier common emitter configuration that is for ce amplifier it provides 180 degree phase shift so as per barkhausen criteria first statement 360 degree or 0 degree so this amplifier is going to provide 180 degree phase shift remaining 180 degree phase shift is provided by feedback network so here in colpits oscillator so it is a high frequency oscillator so again in oscillators there are two types low frequency oscillator and high frequency oscillator in low frequency oscillator in my feedback network we use the components as resistors and capacitors whereas for high frequency oscillators we use the components as inductors and capacitors so in tank circuit if i use two capacitors and one inductor then that will be your colpits oscillator whereas if i use one capacitor and two inductors in a tank circuit then that gives hartley oscillator so here in the circuit you can see this is my amplifier circuit i am not applying any input voltage to this so here the noise voltage or the variation in the power supply that noise voltage in the resistor that gives and that will be taken as the input to the amplifier that small noise voltage will be amplified here and phase shifted by 180 degree suppose if i take this positive and negative here for noise voltage so output will be negative and positive cycle so this output of this amplifier is given as input to this feedback network so feedback network consists here capacitors two capacitors c1 and c2 and this is my inductor and here you can see the plus sign and this is my minus whereas this is minus and this is plus so when the signal comes here positive to negative so it will be inverted here again negative to positive so at the output of this feedback network you get positive to negative here so it gives here for negative to positive i get output as positive to negative means 180 degree phase shift from this feedback network so there is 180 degree phase shift from this feedback network so totally from this amplifier there is 180 degree phase shift from feedback network there is another 180 degree phase shift so total phase shift around the loop is 360 degree so here in this amplifier circuit the design is done as per the requirement so here r1 selection of r1 is 15k whereas for r2 it is 2.7 kilo ohm rc is 1 kilo ohm and re is 270 ohm and here i am connecting a port i will tell you why we need to connect a port here so bypass capacitor is 47 microfarad whereas for coupling capacitor is 0.47 microfarad selection of this coupling capacitor is 0.47 microfarad now we need to design it for tank circuit we need to find the value of this capacitor c1 c2 and l so here in the design you can see design is given for 1 megahertz so as per our formula for frequency of oscillation for colpits oscillator it is given by 1 upon 2 pi root of l c equivalent 
whereas C equivalent is C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. So the given data is frequency 1 megahertz and we are assuming a standard value of capacitor. So standard value of capacitor I am taking C1 equals to C2 that is equals to 470 picofarad. So substituting this value 470 picofarad I will find it for L. So what we get L? L is 119 micro Henry. So I will take a standard value of this inductor 100 micro Henry. So for that 100 micro Henry we get a practical value as 1.04 megahertz. So for our design is for 1.04 megahertz. So we need to take the output at this point uh, in the from the CRO. Now I will move on to our uh, as per the circuit diagram we need to rig up the components in the breadboard. So after connection in the breadboard this is how it looks. So this is my transistor SL100 and this is my RC collector resistor 1 kilo ohm and where is this is my coupling capacitor C2 0.47 microfarad and this is my bypass capacitor 47 microfarad and here you can see 270 ohm and that is connected to pot here. I have taken a pot 5k pot and I have set this pot to a minimum level. Again that on the other end of the pot is connected to emitter terminal. Here you can see emitter terminal and from base, from base terminal here you can see this is my R1 of 15k and this is my R2 of 2.7k and this is my input coupling capacitor CC1 and here you can see I have not applied any input supply that is input signal AC. I am connecting only DC power supply. So DC power supply is of 12 volt. So 12 volt is connected to the circuit and here you can see my inductance box and capacitance box. So the capacitance you can see the reading here 470 picofarad instead of 470 picofarad I have taken 500 picofarad here. So this is for 570 is this for 500 picofarad and this is for 1000 picofarad, 10000 picofarad, 100,000 picofarad and finally 1 microfarad. So I am setting it for 5 here this is my plus here. If I press this is my plus, if I press it, you will get 6. This is my minus, if I press it, it will be decremented to my 5. There is another one, capacitance box. Here you can see in this capacitance box, here also I am setting C2 as 500 picofarad. So here I am pressing it plus, so you can see C6. If I press minus here, again it is decremented to 5. So this is my another inductan inductance box. Here you can see inductance box range. So it is from it is 10 micro Henry, this is 100 micro Henry, 1 milli Henry, and 10 milli Henry and 100 milli Henry. So what we require L L to be or according to our design it is 100 micro Henry. So I am setting this to one here. So it is set to one. So one into 100. So it is. 100 micro entry. So I set this all. So you can see the output here. This is what our output signal. So we need to check the frequency for this. To check the frequency, I am taking it along y axis. So here you can see the frequency. I am varying my exposition here. I am varying my exposition. I am checking for frequency. So here you can see from crust to crust. So here you can see. So it is from crust to crust or tro to tro. You can check it frequency from crust to crust or tro to tro. So here from tro to tro, it is covering how much division? So along x axis, it is covering 1.2 division. It is covering 1.2. So, so one division here, complete one division. After that, 0.2. So it is covering 1.2 division into one microsecond. So that is my time period, time period of my signal. So 1.2 into one microsecond, we get 1.2 microsecond. So 1.2 microsecond if I take a reciprocal of that we get a frequency. So if I calculate this frequency, so theoretical and practical value, so resultant will be my time I am getting it as 1.2 microsecond. So frequency is 1 upon time that gives 833 kilohertz or 0.833 megahertz. 
so our theoretical value of frequency was 1 megahertz so we achieved practically it as 0.833 megahertz now we need to check the assumed value so our from our design assumed value are 4.8 volt across rc voltage across collector resistor voltage across m collector temperature 6 volt voltage across emitter is 1.2 volt so we will check this voltages now so for this i am connecting a multimeter across ce so you can check the reading here so when i connect it across ce so this mic so you can see it is around 4.78 so our design was for 6 volt we are getting 4.78 similarly across rc across rc you can check i am connecting it here across rc it is 3 volt similarly across re means i will connect it across emitter and ground so here across emitter and ground Okay, so emitter ground it is 3.89. These are our practical values. That is voltage across RC, voltage across collector emitter, and voltage across VE. So 3.88 is my voltage across emitter. Now you see the variation in the. Now you can see the variation in the output. So this is my pot. So when I vary this pot here, so it is already set. You can see. So when I vary this pot, you can see the variation. Okay, this is what I am setting this pot to a very minimum position. I am setting this pot to a very minimum position. This is how you get the output initially. Initially, you get this type of output. So I am slightly varying this pot. You can see the change. So when I vary this pot, slightly you can see the change that the distortion in the negative cycle it is decreasing. The distortion in the negative cycle you can see. When I am wearing the pot here, distortion in negative cycle is decreasing. So finally, this is how you get the output for pulpit's oscillator. Thank you. So well, we will move on to the next experiment. From First we have done it for pulpit's oscillator, next we will move on to crystal oscillator. So in crystal oscillator, aim is design and set up the crystal oscillator and determine the frequency of oscillations so here the components are given here same components we need to take it for as uh, we have done it for a culprit same components we need to take it for crystal oscillator so what is this crystal oscillator so crystal oscillators where we use they are used in order to get stable sinusoidal signal despite of variations in temperature so as you know if there is a change in temperature or change in humidity or transistor bit of a transistor or circuit parameters like leakage current and all there is a big change in the output voltage so to avoid that we go for crystal oscillators so in crystal oscillator it works on the principle called piezoelectric effect so there is a piezoelectric crystal so that crystal it is used in the oscillator at resonant tank circuit so this my amplifier so this amplifier output of this amplifier is given to feedback network beta of a network so here we are using crystal oscillator so this is my crystal oscillator symbol of crystal oscillator so here output of this amplifier is given as given to the one and one plate of the cap, um, crystal oscillator other plate of the crystal oscillator is given as input to the amplifier so crystal works under the principle of piezoelectric effect so what is this piezoelectric effect says so when an ac signal is applied across the crystal so this is my crystal here when i apply some ac signal voltage across this then it starts vibrating it vibrates at what frequency at frequency equal to the applied voltage so if i apply 1 kilohertz frequency input ac signal at the same frequency it is going to vibrate conversely conversely means if i take the reverse case also if the crystal is forced to vibrate it will generate an ac signal means if i make it to vibrate if i give mechanical vibrations to this crystal then this crystal is going to generate an ac signal of required frequency so commonly this type of crystals are 
quartz crystal rock salt etc so here the design is for vcc equals to 12 volt and cq is given 4 milliampere so v is 10% of vcc or up to one fifth of vcc so vc is taken here 6 volt means here we have taken vc as uh, vcc upon 2 so vcc is 12 volt 12 divided by 2 we have taken 6 volt here hf of transistor 100 because you are selecting sl100 transistor from the data sheet hf of this sl100 is 100 hf is 100 so we choose v equals to 2 volt because we have taken 10 percent of vcc to one fifth of vcc so we are selecting out of 12 volt voltage across emitter to be 2 volt so this is our design so r is v upon ie so v upon ie is nearly equal to ic emitter current nearly equal to collector current so 2 volt divided by 4 milli ampere so i am taking icq as 4 milli ampere so we get 500 ohm so i am selecting 500 ohm as 470 that is my standard value of this resistor nearest standard value so apply kcl to the collector emitter loop so if you go through the diagram here apply kcl oh sorry kvl to this collector emitter loop so when you apply kvl to this loop so we get this equation from this equation kvl equation we find for rc so rc we got one kilo ohm so this is what about the design part so we are selecting r1 to be 33 kilo ohm and r2 to be so here we have taken it as 15k and 2.7k or else if you have taken 33k this could have been 5.6 kilo ohm right now here according to this design they have taken the components and we have rig up this same components in our breadboard here you can see this is my transistor bg transistor this is my second input output coupling capacitor this is my input coupling capacitor this is my bypass capacitor so to this input coupling capacitor i have connected a crystal here one end of the crystal so other end of the crystal you can see the red wire so other end of the crystal it is connected to output so at the feedback network there is only a crystal present over here so the supply voltage is 10 vo 12 volt fixed voltage 12 volt here you can see our output signal so in this output signal you can see that we need to calculate the frequency so here you can see either we need to go for crust to crust or trough to trough so here if you check for trough to trough it is covering how much division one division so from here to here one cycle is covering one division so one division into our time so one division into 0.5 microsecond that gives a time period t equals to one division into 0.5 microsecond so we get 0.5 microsecond as our time period if we want to calculate the frequency of oscillation frequency will be one upon t so that we get one divided by 0.5 microsecond we get two mega hertz so this frequency is equals to the this frequency is equals to our crystal frequency here you can see our crystal frequency is 2 megahertz so our output voltage is equals to our crystal frequency of 2 megahertz so here it is a assumed values of voltage across collector resistor voltage across collector emitter voltage at emitter so here it is 4.8 6 volt and 1.2 volt so we can connect it through a multimeter we will check it our practical values of voltage across rc so this is my r this is my RC. So you can see the reading here. It is 3.54. Now next voltage across collector and emitter. So this is my collector and this is my emitter. You can see it is 4.98. So nearly 5 volt. Our required was 6 volt. We got it as nearly 5 volt. Next voltage across emitter. So voltage at the emitter with respect to ground here it is 2.99 that is nearly equals to 3 volt getting it so minus and we are getting we are and I connected this one to be reverse here and I connected red to the ground and black to the positive terminal so we are getting so now we are getting 
a plus now we will get a plus sign with now we are getting 2.98 so this is what our voltage across emitter